What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I've got the cars moved around into a Tetris block uh, layout at the moment, but that is because I am starting more work on the 59 Beetle Pan. To get you guys up to speed, this Beetle Pan is going underneath the 1960 Auto Union 1000 SP. I need to really make some sort of like in the previous episode segment uh, so you guys can kind of see or get caught up on where I'm at. For any new viewers or any new subscribers to the channel, um, this 1960 Auto Union 1000 SP, very, very rare Auto Union, um, is becoming a hot rod candidate. Uh, I don't wanna say it was beyond restoration because basically anything can be restored nowadays. We're watching that happen with 21 and 23 window buses that don't even look like vehicles anymore. All they need is a VIN plate and they're building everything around it. But I've always loved bagging and hot rodding weird oddball cars. And I don't do it with showroom condition or time capsule uh, cars. I like doing it with cars that are basically more work. Uh, ones that are rotted out and been sitting for years and years. So this 1000 SP is no exception. Uh, some of you guys may know I have a second one I have a German market 1962 that's in my enclosed trailer outside. Uh, that's a one owner car. That one will be a future restoration candidate for someone else, someone with the deep pockets that wants to restore one. This one is going to be more than likely the first bagged and body dropped 1000 SP. Again, to get you guys up to speed, three cylinder, two stroke front wheel drive car originally from the factory. Uh, really, really really cool and i did everything i could to justify keeping it front wheel drive three cylinder two stroke i bought the second 1000 sp simply because it came with a garage full of parts motors uh mechanical components generators clutches and just everything i knew i was going to need if i wanted to drive this car with the three cylinder setup in it but then the more i thought about the value of the other 1000 sp the more i realized that if i sold that car I'd really want everything going with it for the future restoration candidate, hopefully. But also anything I let go with the other one would rob me of parts that I'd probably need down the road to keep this car on the road. So much like the BMW 700 Sport Coupe, we're going Beetle Pan. And I know that that sounds like the easy way out, but trust me, it isn't. It, now that I've started to cut the floors out of the 1000, there's so much more work involved in putting this over the beetle pan than keeping it three cylinder and modifying the body to, to bag it basically, or to modify the suspension. So I'll try not to have this segment be too much talking head, but that's where we're at with this project. You'd never notice it or you'd never guess, but the beetle pan is two inches longer of a wheelbase than the Auto Union 1000 SP. So I've got to shorten this pan down by two inches, basically line up the wheel arches on the auto union body. So that is what I'm gonna be doing today. When you're custom building stuff, people will do things a thousand different ways. So the way I'm deciding to do this might not be the best way, it might not be the easiest way. It's the way that I think might be the easiest way. But let me fill you guys in as to where I'm at. So it's gotta get shortened by only two inches. Normally, you see guys shortening pans right here. And that's exactly where we shortened the 700 pan. But when you do that, you've gotta shorten your shift rod, your e-brake cables, throttle cable, clutch cable, basically anything that runs on that tunnel, everything has to get shortened and modified. Now to shorten it down by only two inches, that's a lot of work to just go two inches. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out right here. And that'll save me from having to mess with anything from the firewall, pedal box, shift bar, everything all the way back. Now a lot of you guys may have some solutions for this um, and that will be great. But what I'm dealing with on the body specifically is that pedal cluster is way in underneath the firewall uh, for where the front wheel arch is in relation to the firewall and steering wheel, ultimately driver position, the beetle pan is far too forward with everything. So my problem I think is gonna be where I wanna sit comfortably in the auto union with where the steering wheel is, if I keep the column and just modify the engine bay end of it, I won't be able to reach my pedals. They're gonna be far too forward and underneath the firewall. So I thought about shortening it back here to pull 
everything back two inches. The problem is I don't think two inches is gonna be enough. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna shorten it here, which will keep the pedal box static. That's not gonna move now. But then from there, just cross the bridge of either remounting the pedal box down farther or custom making some pedal arms to reach back farther. There's plenty of information online as to what this wheelbase is, but I'm not assuming. I'm gonna pull all my measurements. I even have a book, an auto union book that shows all the specifications and wheelbase length of that car too. But I'll go outside and pull one more tape on the chassis outside for the SP as well. All right, so I'm referring back to the 1961 DKW Auto Union Guide. This is just insane information that is not found on the internet. I mean, this type of stuff for such a small enthusiast crowd nowadays, this kind of stuff isn't going on forums or anything like that. But in here is an incredible amount of information about all the auto unions that were being built in the early 60s. But oddly enough, there's a bunch of info about the SP1000, um, which they only made just under 5,000 of, or just over. Pretty amazing stuff, especially for a car that's so rare that you wouldn't normally find this information on the internet. Right down here at the bottom, under dimensions, we've got total length, width, height, and wheelbase. 92 and a half inches. And even on this page, we've got more specifications under a chart. 1000 SP, wheelbase, 92.52 inches. Then you've got your curb weight. So if you guys are interested in knowing, this car from the factory was 2,090 pounds. All right, so I got the pin head all cleaned up, got all the brake lines off, got the brake master cylinder out, speedo cables out, fuel line is cut and tucked down inside. Yeah, that's basically it. Got everything just kind of cleaned up and ready to cut. So I'm gonna pull some measurements first. I'll probably pull off the beam to the actual firewall uh, since I'm gonna leave the beam on. That way I don't have to mess with my steering or anything like that. Uh, pull some measurements, make sure both sides are the same. I'll get my support jigged up. I'll cut the pan head right off. Then I'll make my two inch cut and try to scoot it up and make sure my measurements are the same on both sides, just minus two inches. All right, so I pulled some measurements from the back of the mounting points for the beam to the pan head to the actual firewall. And we're right about 10 and 7 eighths on both sides. So I'm going to go for 8 and 7 eighths when it's all done and made it up. It's not going to be clean cut. Both cuts aren't going to be perfect um, or mirrored, so they won't match up right away. been making my way through the front of the actual tunnel and then started making a cut on the pan head itself on the 2 inch section because I wanted to get access to the inside of the belly pan. I crawled underneath and made a preliminary cut, but not all the way through, just to kind of get a line started. All right, while the pan head is free, it's technically in two pieces now, and luckily where I had uh, the chassis on the lift and how I've got the beam in front of the pan head jigged up. It didn't move 
but more than a millimeter when I finally cut all the way through. So that's good. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize the strap piece I cut out and kind of form it a little bit better, but fit it underneath the front of the pan here. I'll drill some holes and then plug weld this to the actual pan head. So this will act as my bridge between the two. Not only will that give me a better weld surface, but it'll also strengthen that joint up. So it's basically uh, reinforcing those two pieces. You'll notice on the right side, there's still an empty hole. Well, that just so happened to line up where the speedo cable port was in the tunnel. So out of all the places I could have drilled that second hole, I drilled it right in the same spot where the speedo hole was. All right, so it's the next morning. Uh, worked pretty late on this and kind of found the things I needed to resolve in order to get this mated and centered and where it needs to be. All right, so I got everything together. I got my measurements where I need them and basically have just left it prepped to weld up. Well, I think getting the tunnel welded up is enough to make it structurally sound to pull the jack stands and the jack out from under it. That way I can get it up on the lift and get a better angle of approach from underneath where I'll probably, I'll plate the underside. That way I have something to weld to inside uh, the seam there. And I should do something under there anyway to, to kind of gusset it, to kind of give it a little bit more structural integrity as well as underneath the actual tunnel. Uh, I, I need to bridge that gap as well. That'll make that reinforced well enough to where it's probably stronger than stock. All right, well, I got up in the air on the lift, basically swept the whole floor up, cleaned everything up from all the metal cutting and metal grinding. Pan head is secure. Basically cleaned up the floor, swept everything up from all the metal cutting and grinding, and got it up in the air to just kind of take a look at my seams here. I'm pretty happy with my seams. Everything's pretty tight all the way across. Now that the top is welded and I can really hammer on this, I'm gonna flatten out some of these dimples uh, so I can get uh, something across the bottom and weld it up. I'll put some flat stock across the bottoms on each side of the tunnel as well. 
and get some good welds on them. That'll act as a, as a, like a double up gusset almost to strengthen that up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to trim my fuel line. That's jammed in there pretty hard now. Uh, but I'm gonna trim that and try to get it up and out of the port. That way I can just use that fuel line. All right, well I got the fuel line cut and rerouted, rebent and routed up through the fuel line port there. Uh, but hopefully that fuel line is solid. I'll put some air to it, try to blow it out the back and um, yeah, cross that bridge when we get to it. I'm glad I had a chance to get this done uh, before Christmas, hitting the road 20 hours back to New Hampshire for Christmas tomorrow. So I was kind of cutting this close. I hope you guys have a great holiday. I'm excited to get home and see my family. Hope you guys are spending your time with loved ones as well. When we get back, gonna be diving right back in on this thing. Gonna have some Ludwig's Garage merch for you guys. I forget to promote that here on the channel as the channel's growing, which I can't thank you guys enough for. All of you guys over on the Patreon as well. You've kind of been a few steps ahead on everything that's going on here in the shop. If you feel like supporting the channel and supporting these builds, the Patreon link is in the video's description below. But even just subscribing to the channel helps significantly. So thank you guys so much for all of your support. I'm going to be getting some new Ludwig's Garage merch out, hopefully by the first of the year, if not definitely in January. All of this stuff takes so much mental bandwidth and there's just not enough hours in the day. So for now, you can go to ludwigsgarage.com. The link is also in the video's description to see what I've got currently in stock for the Patina Paradise shirts, which are tees and long sleeves. Those are in some scattered sizes. That's just leftover inventory on what I have left. But 2022 has been an amazing year. Thank you guys so much for all the support, the channel's growth, my personal growth in expanding this shop, building the shop out, almost everything you see here has been done this year alone. And when you're self-employed, that is a long, expensive road. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.